Strastvuitsie Tavarish, and welcome to the Russian answer to the never-ending story, The Everlasting Summer. And if you're wondering, yes, I thought of this bad pun beforehand. Alright, let's see what happens on our hike here. And all this happening in the scarlet rays of the sunset. Wow, I really stopped mid-sentence last uh, episode, didn't I? I have no idea what the context for this sentence is. And there he is, waving his hand and screaming attack as roaring soldiers with wrecked neckerchiefs charge into the battle against some ghostly enemy. Or is he talking about Gen- Yeah, he is talking about Genda, isn't he? But Olga showed up and started to talk instead of Genda. Okay. It seems everybody is here. Great! I was so tired today that I couldn't even think about anything. So I ended up just listening to the camp leader. Now, today we'll go hiking. It's essential for every pioneer to be able to come and rescue his comrade, to offer a helping hand in the hour of need, saving them from a hopeless situation. We have to learn to do all these things together. Well, I have the feeling this is very important for the romantic relationships, because, you know, on a school trip, hiking at night, you know, I mean, it's not a school trip here, but it's a pioneer camp, so basically the same, there will be something romantic, I suppose at least. A whisper that ran through the pioneer crowd suggested that most probably this truly epic expedition would end in a clearing in the forest, several hundred feet away from the square. Somehow I thought so too. <laughs> well, we'll walk in Paris, yes! So if you haven't chosen a partner for yourself yet, now is the right time to do so. Pioneers quickly caught on to the idea and started to match in Paris. It looked like I was the only one without a partner. Slavia was enthusiastically discussing something with Olga. Lena was with Miku. Electronic was, of course, with Shurik. Hey, don't give me Elisa. I don't want that. Well, it might not be a bad idea to go alone after all. Semyon! The voice of the camp leader pulled me out of my thoughts. I went up to her reluctantly. I see that you haven't found a partner. Seems like it. Then you'll join Xenia. Mm. Second worst choice. She's alone too. I was struck with that special kind of despair that only a true loner can experience. Believe me, my friend, I've felt that so many times. Like when we when we were uh, did sports in school. I got only picked um yeah, in some ball games I was picked early. Because people had the misconception I was uh, good at basketball because I was tall. And I was a good goalie in football. The soccer football, you know. I was the good goalie. So I sometimes got picked in the middle there too. But except for that, I was always the one who was a loner on the bench. That's a similar, similar situation here. So... It appears that I'm left with a prickly librarian that I wouldn't risk spending a couple of hours with, with even if I was paid for it. Although we both seem to be in the same boat now. I slowly approached Xenia. We'll be going together. Well, I guess we'll be going together. She looked up at me. Don't you even think that I'm glad? No, I don't think that, lady. You don't look so glad. Well, actually, you don't look that disgusted by me but uh let's imagine you don't look glad said Xenia seriously why on earth should you why on earth you should feel glad okay i asked naively never mind it would be much better if you just shut up you know maybe maybe Xenia knows i am uh, the only person who i really had Basically, no contact to was Xenia. Maybe Xenia knows something about this parallel universe and stuff. Hmm. Maybe I should have listened to her instead of ignoring her in the canteen back a few episodes ago. Hmm. Eh, it couldn't get any better than this. She turned her back on me and followed the other pioneers. I still haven't seen any special reason to walk in Paris. Anyway, we were walking on the well-trodden forest trails. And it would be quite difficult to get lost here, even if I wanted to. Moreover, while we'd already have been hiking for half an hour, we weren't rushing into the depths of the forest, trying to face all the dangers that could test our courage and harden our pioneer spirits. But instead we were just walking around in circles. 
However, if we take into account that Olga was our chief, the site could be compared to a hobbit's marsh from the Shire to Mordor. <laughs> References. Just a senior assistant. I was following her at a distance in silence. The librarian seemed to be perfectly okay with it. Hey, don't you know when we'll reach our destination? Our what? Uh, hmm, uh, the place where we'll settle down and set up camp. The whole point of this hike isn't to set up a camp, but the hiking itself. You don't get it. Yeah, it seemed that I didn't understand a thing about hiking. I guess you're right, but still... I don't know. She replied sharply and quickened her pace. I caught up with her and asked, Listen, why are you always so... I was about to say mean, but stopped sh short. I haven't done anything bad to you, and I'm not going to. She glared at me in surprise. Always so... what? Well, unsociable. Kind of. Or is it something about me? Oh, cut that stupidity out already. As you wish. I decided not to start a conversation with her for the rest of the hike. Maybe this would have been different if I'd talked to her in the canteen. Hmm. At last, Olga decided to the, to end this Sisyphean toil. Sisyphean. Ah, like Sisyphus. Ah, I get it. Greek mythology, people. It's time to halt. The place chosen turned out to be quite a large glade with a few trunks laid in half circle to make an improvised arbor, arbor with the remains of a campfire in the middle. Obviously, such hikes are a tradition of this camp. I was sent to gather firewood together with the other boys. It didn't take long because there were a lot of branches and logs of various sizes lying around. Eventually, Olga lit the fire using some old newspapers. I was eager to know what was written there, but couldn't discern anything other than Soviet symbols. Hmm. I wonder that that would actually have been that would have been interested. What what's the fav the the famous Soviet um Ah, the favorite, uh, not famous, favorite, famous Soviet newspaper. What is this, what is it called? Ah, something with W in German, at least. Then it's probably something with V in, uh, in English. Because we transcribe, um, we uh, transcribe Russian differently than English people. That's actually quite interesting. But, uh, what was it? Ah, I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore. If you know, leave it in the comments down below. I'm happy about any comment. Pioneers took their places on the fallen lock benches and started to talk about things. It seems that the final goal of this event had been achieved. The only things missing were a pot of fish soup, aluminum cups of vodka and a guitar. But I wouldn't be surprised if all of these would appear somehow. What are you thinking about? Slavia sat next to me. Oh, nothing special. Just enjoying the hike. I answered sarcastically. You don't look too happy. Well, I'm not about to jump for joy, sorry about that. Okay, I won't disturb you. She sat with me for a while, but after realizing that I wasn't in the mood of talking, she left me to enjoy my introspection all alone. <sighs> why is he like that? And why is he like that to Slavia especially? And all I wished for was to lie down in bed and fall asleep as soon as possible. But I was being surrounded by smoke and the useless chatter of Pyrenees around me instead. They were cheering and laughing and in general enjoying the warm summer evening. In the far side of the glade I noticed that Lena was arguing with Lisa, Lisa intensely. Intensely and Lena seemed like complete opposites to me. Huh. Slavia had left to go somewhere after our conversation it seems. Maybe they are arguing about, um, Gone with the Wind. Electronic and Shurik were trying furiously to prove something to Olga. Looks like I'm the only one who doesn't belong here. Yeah, let's see what they are arguing about. I mean, we all know what they are arguing about, since I am a genius and already explained to you people what they are arguing about, even though it was kind of obvious. Try to find out what Alisa and Lena are arguing about. Let's be a uh, eavesdropper then. But on the other hand, why should I care? All I was doing was just watching the fire. There's a saying that claims that one could watch it forever, as well as running water. But there was also some third thing there. What was that? 
one could watch three things forever. Burning fire, running water, and how other people work. <laughs> the camp leader put me out of my daydreaming. Simeon, don't you think it's too early to relax? Weren't we eavesdropping on... Uh... But what else would I need to do? I honestly couldn't get what Olga wanted from me. I don't know. She stopped for a moment. But if there's something to be done, then do it without hesitation. She smiled ambiguously and went back to the fire to the roof. Like a personal slave. Or at least like I'm a labor force. Oh, well, that's strange. Wait, let me go on a little bit ahead. Yeah, I, I did. I, I, I chose the wrong by accident, didn't I? Yeah, no, no, I pushed the right thing. Is this, like, wrong in the English translation? Let's see. Oh, no, I already saved that. My bad. But what happens when do nothing? When I chose do nothing? All I was doing was just watching the fire. There's a saying that one could... What was that? One could... Okay, was that exactly the same thing? Ah, oh... God, I am so super stupid. Yeah, why would I care? That's what he said. So I would have listened uh, if I probably, if I knew that um, she read, uh, uh, you know, the book. Oh, I'm so stupid. My bad, my bad, guys. Totally my bad. <laughs> I honestly couldn't get what Olga wanted from me. I don't know. She stopped for a moment. Ah, yeah, okay, we had that. Yeah, she... Okay, here we are. Or at least, like I'm a free labor force, which is strictly speaking the same thing. I sighed and put my head down on my hands, hoping my torments would be over for today. Someone patted me on the shoulder. I looked up and saw Shurik and Electronic who sat next to me. What do you want? I asked tiredly. Hey, don't be sad. Is there anything better to do? Wow, that has been very emo. <laughs> Look, we've been discussing the possibilities for the advancement of the Cybernetics Club with Augur. And, and there is a problem. We need more guys. If you could. He hesitated. Advancement and those guys are incompatible with each other. I said nothing and started to look over the pioneers around me instead. Well, I don't have time. Can't you see that I'm always busy with the camp leaders or ants? Yeah, I guess you're right. It's kind of embarrassing how it all went today with Ulyana. I looked at him with surprise. It seems that Shurik blames himself for the cake accident. Why, though? Yeah, it is. All the pioneers seem to be here, but I couldn't spot Slavia anywhere. What has Slavia to do with anything? Uh, am I in the wrong movie today? <laughs> I think she's angry with me. Who? I asked absently. Ulyana. Maybe I should apologize. No, it's not your fault. We sat silently for a while, and then I stood up and said, Malexana. I better take a walk. They made no reply. I made a few circles around our improvised camp, noticing the clock uh, the close looks of the camp leader following me. Looks like Olga couldn't wait to come up with some kind of new task for me. I haven't found Slavia anywhere. Maybe I should go and try to find her. On the other hand, I felt sorry for Jana every time I recalled her upset face. Maybe this hike isn't the most entertaining thing ever, but sitting there all alone isn't any better either. But at the same time, I didn't want to go anywhere. This is a really douchey choice. This is a real douchey choice. This is a really douchey choice. Because, for real, if I would imagine me, you know, and that's always what I do. You know that by now, hopefully. And if you turned up, uh, if this is the first video you see, then hello and welcome. I'm always going by what I would supposedly do. The thing is, I could uh, imagine me doing both very well. Because I'm, I'm sorry for Jana. She, she obviously, she isn't, she isn't a bad person. She's a spoiled brat, <laughs> but not a bad person. On the other hand, um, I mean, she really brought that one up on herself. You know what I mean? Mm. 
Okay, I don't remain seated. I know as much. <laughs> I don't remain seated. Ah, not load game. Damn it. Uh, save. There we go. Save game. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, no way. Z there we go. Go to Ulyana, try to find Slavia. I'm sorry, Ulyana. You brought that one up on yourself. I was absolutely sure that Slavia was alright. So I decided to stay? What? What? How? What's going on? Like, for real, no, 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 no. Let's just see. If he says as well. I just want to know if he says, he says as well. Oh, uh, Ulyana will be fine. But on the other hand, why should I care about that witch? Okay, he's just angry. Okay, we'll stay with Try to Find Slavia. Okay, I guess this episode tries to tell us that uh, Semyon is... Um, can't handle the shit anymore. <laughs> Man, I really don't like you today. Sorry, Simeon. I sat in my previous place and waited for the end of the hike patiently, almost physically able to feel the looks the camp leader, camp leader at me. At least she stood up and declared, oh, God damn it, Mouse, what are you doing again? And now, let's play Cities. I had nothing against the game itself, but it was obvious that the hike will take longer because of it. Pioneers sat around the fire. What is the cities? Hmm. I noticed Lena and Elisa, who took their places on a trunk opposite to me. It seems that everything is alright. Just a few minutes ago I thought the opposite while looking at the quarrel. But anything is possible. I'd really like to know what they were talking about. But it's impossible now, and I could feel tiredness growing in me more and more. My mind was completely blank. To be precise, my head was so heavy that there was no place in it for ideas to unfold. While in my better times my brain appeared to be a wide highway with millions of thoughts running by, chasing one another and causing major crashes, now it was more like a footpath lost in the woods, which is used rarely and only in exceptional cases. Slavia didn't come back. Maybe she had something to do. Oh... Maybe something with Ulyana would now happen if I decided to go for Ulyana. Hmm. Well. Like, for real. This game really wants you to make a second playthrough, just to decide all the opposites. <laughs> you know what I mean? But once again, there's no way to find out now. Okay, let's start. Moscow. Pioneer started to name cities. Finally, it was my turn. I tried to listen closely to catch the first letter of the city I'll have to use. Arkhangelsk. We played several rounds. Each new city name made it harder to remember everything that was mentioned before. My attention was dissipating and I was already lost in all these capitals, megalopolises, villages and urban settlements. Semyon. Semyon, it's your turn. Olga brought me back to reality. Oh, uh, excuse me, and what was the last one? You're daydreaming again. It was Sevastopol. Okay, then I say London. Already used. Well then... Leningrad. It got me thinking. There were tons of cities in the world, starting with L. But it was hard to remember even one of them now. Liverpool? Already there. Los Angeles? Ah, finally. She gave me a scornful look, but the game went on. Could hardly bear to think of another city with L. But, fortunately, it was the last round. Okay, that's enough for today. It's already late. Time to go back. I sighed with relief. On our way back, we walked as we liked. We walked as we liked, without joining in pairs. Night descended upon the camp. A perfect year regular, regular and normal night. It was one of those nights when dark skies, stars, and even a crescent moon doesn't cause any special feelings and the chirping of crickets and the songs of the nightbirds seem more like routine work noises than a nocturnal, nocturnal chorus. In a few minutes, minutes, all the peonies were lining up in the square. And Slavia is still missing, probably. 
It was quite late already, and fatigue took its toll, so our lineup wasn't perfectly aligned. It looked to me more like a line of Vikings after a successful battle, where the warriors are happy and smiling, anticipating their return to their families, rather than thinking about maintaining correct formation. But someone else could possibly see a completely defeated troop, or a bunch of survivors who have to march to their homeland with the last of their strengths. Thanks, everyone. And now, go to sleep. It's late already. Pioneers quickly ran, e each ran their own ways, and I was left together with the camp leader. And we should go too. We went in complete silence to August's cabin. Okay, let's sleep. She said, turning off the light. I was tossing and turning for quite a while, recalling all the events of the day. On the one hand, I was overcome with fatigue. On the other hand, I couldn't shake the feeling that I'd forgotten something done something wrong, said something wrong, and this feeling of incompleteness was tor tormenting me. It was about 2 a.m. All bad things would end sooner or later, or at least would take a break. And what is he talking about? Hmm. Maybe he forgot about that uh, Slavia disappeared? I don't know. So, dream sequence? Day six, so we're almost done, I suppose. I don't know what time it... No, no dream sequence, okay. I don't know what time it was when Olga woke me up, but even before opening my eyes, I felt the imminence of death. My whole body ached, I felt dizzy, my mind was clouded by haze. Simeon, wake up immediately, or you'll make miss breakfast, and more importantly, the lineup. Looks like the camp leader intends to exploit me to the fullest today. The same as any other day. I gobbled something, covered my head with a blanket, and turned to the wall. In the end, August's anger will never go beyond words. At least I really wanted to believe so then. Stand up right now, or... Oh, what? I was going to say triumphantly, but kept silent. Not because of fear, just because I felt too lazy to open my mouth. Really, what could she do to me? Lecture me at the line up? Hang my photo on the wall of shame? Or use me for inhuman alien experiments? That's the most probable thing. Well, I'm ready for that too. Just let me sleep a couple of hours. Okay, but if you miss the lineup... The door slammed behind the camp leader, and the sleep which had been about to fade claimed my mind again. I woke up dazzled by sunlight. It was 1pm, wow, you really slept long according to my cell phone, which was squeezing the last drops of charge out of its batteries. Amazing, didn't you say two days ago it will be done tomorrow? Strange to laugh, my body didn't ache, my head felt clearer, and, all in all, it was a good beginning to the day. After waving my arms, pretending to do early exercises, I sprang out of the cavern and headed to the wash stands. Yeah, I slept for breakfast, but we'll be served for lunch soon. So I shouldn't worry that I'll have to stay hungry like I did yesterday. Hello? Are you a madman or something? <laughs> Along the way I met a pioneer whose face somehow looked strangely familiar. But I was going so fast I couldn't really see him. And when I turned around he was already gone around the corner. Strange. There was nobody near the wash stands. Everyone is probably busy with August tasks and god know what else. I quickly brushed my teeth, washed my face, and was already going to leave when I suddenly heard the sound of water flowing from the opposite tap. A pioneer leaned against the washstand over there. I couldn't see his face, but judging by his figure, he looked like the one I saw a couple of minutes ago. How are you doing? The sun is so bright today. I looked up into the sky, shielding my eyes with my palm. Yeah, nothing special. It wasn't easy to get a better look at the pioneer. Given the way he stood, the bright sunlight that reflected from the water, and shiny metal surfaces of the washstands heavily obscured his face, and I wasn't able to distinguish any single future, a uh, feature, <laughs> future. The camp leader is angry today, so angry. His voice sounded painfully familiar too. Well, she's always like that. Well, you'd know better, yeah. I tried to remember if I've ever heard this voice or seen this pioneer before. Oh, see ya. 
He turned the water off and quickly marched towards the forest path. For a second I thought of following him, stopping him, but I quickly fought, up, fought it off as I decided that it's not worth spotting such a great morning with suspicions and burdensome speculations. You know what, man? You're a motherfucking idiot. The one time, the one time something seems strange to you, you don't go after it? What the fuck is wrong with you, man? The last two days you were like the biggest dick, biggest dickus, you know what I mean? Nature was glowing with a bright light of life. Blue street tops were rhythmically, rhythmically swaying in the wind, whispering to each other. The breeze gently stroked the high emerald grass. Birds were cooing in the shade, escaping the midday heat. The woods and fields stretching beneath the horizon were dissolving in warm sunlight. I don't know which month it is, is it, it is now, but it looks like midsummer. I distinctly remember the summer vacations of my childhood and youth. Times of fun leisure and carefree joy. Childhood games, how many they were how many there were. I wouldn't say no to playing war games or hide and seek now. Or swinging on a bungee. Or maybe building a sandcastle and inhibiting it with toy soldiers. That's what I would do. Ready to defend the master to the last drop of the plastic blood. I went to the square and sat on a bench, waiting for lunch. It looked like there wasn't much time left before it. From time to time, peonies passed by me, sometimes alone, sometimes in Paris or groups of three. But always someone I didn't know. Alisa, Ulyana, Lena or Slavia were nowhere to be seen. Strange. So there is a new face that seems familiar and the old faces are gone. It's like reality overtaking this camp or something. Hmm. Thoughts about the meaninglessness of existence were cycling in my brain. But this didn't worry me on such a beautiful day. Just think about it. Who could think of griefing for his life, lived in vain, or lost early while basking in the rays of such a friendly sun? Certainly not me. I looked up on Genda. He was meditating, as always. Now he definitely never gets any unnecessary doubts. I remembered my first hours in the camp and the day before, the anguish, the anxiety and fear. It all seems so far away now, although so little time has passed. Will I get out of here or not? It didn't concern me as much, be as much before. Maybe I'm already dead. Then this is the last stop. Please get off the train. What are you thinking about? I looked up and saw that peony I had seen before. I couldn't see his face again, as the sun was shining in my eyes. Hmm, so is he me or something? Maybe. I don't know. You know, life... It seemed he would sit down next to me, but the peony stayed in the same place, only half-termed, which completely killed any hope of seeing his face. Listen, have we met earlier? I don't think I remember you. Well, let's say that you know who I am. But I don't. I laughed sincerely. Here, you don't. He answered short. I see. Honestly, it's not like I didn't want to talk. I just didn't know what to talk about. But my soul was so calm, this didn't bother me. Your first time here? He asked the question, but his tone implied he was only expecting a confirmation. Yes, and you? Me? He paused for a few seconds. Nah, it's not my first time here. One might say that I've visited this camp every year since my early childhood. Such an answer got me interested. So, he's a victim as well, I suppose. Well, maybe not a victim, but a visitor of this camp from outside. <laughs> well, and what was it like before? It's always the same. Olga being the camp leader. All the same pianists around. All the same lineups in the morning. And all these wicked accidents. For a moment I thought that it was me speaking, not him. Interesting. It's just that with every new, he hesitated. Year. More and more interesting things happen. And one gets to understand better what is going on. What are you talking about? This conversation positively triggered my curiosity. It's a pity that I can't distinguish the face of this pioneer at all. Well... Every session in the pioneer camp reminds me of the previous one, he said calmly. Probably. This is my first. 
It shows. The Pioneer grinned. But it looks like it won't be the last. Well, it's fun here and all, but... Uh, you know how they say, there's no place like home. But you still have to get back there. Now, I was absolutely sure that this guy was hiding something from me. You don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to distinguish that. <laughs> to be precise, he stood out too much from the camp's usual ordinaries and was too different from the local inhabitants. What do you mean? You think I'm stuck here forever or something? I said, enunciating every word. The pioneer had no time to answer as the lunch bell sounded, which is still a trumpet, by the way. I turned my head towards the loudspeaker, and by the time I looked back, the guy was already gone. Thousands of fe theories and speculations instantly appeared in my mind, but I stood my but I stopped myself, remembering all the apparent normality of this camp. After all, nothing supernatural has happened in these five days. Well, the thing with Shurik, a little bit, maybe? I don't know. Moreover, everything here seemed too normal, sometimes even boring. Maybe this pioneer didn't mean any mean anything by that, and I just misunderstood him? No. No. Uh, the one, The one thing with the game, you know... Always when they are seemingly talking around the bush, it's, it's kind of obvious what they actually are saying. Only Simeon is playing the dumbass, you know. Well, that's a, that's a pro video game protagonist for you. Everyone knows someone is going to turn on him. Wrestling word for some a friend of him will get an enemy of him. Only the main character has no idea. That's how games work. Thinking that, I went to the canteen, intending to feast. Well, I don't think you can feast there. Especially if you don't eat fish. Mm. I mean, uh, there are other things you can feast with instead of fish. But fish seems to be something common there. <laughs> Sometimes it seemed to me that lunch here is akin to the crowds around the soup kitchen during a famine. Pioneers were running around, pushing each other, trying to crawl through, the, through for the first meal and take the most comfortable table. That's so normal. <laughs> I was calmly standing and patiently waiting for the cook to get me my assigned food rations. Okroshka is a traditional Rus Russian cold soup. Mm, never heard of that. For lunch today we had okroshka, which I didn't really like, and cutlets with potatoes. I sat in a corner and mentally rejoiced that I would be able to eat in peace. My table was the farthest from the kitchen. I could reasonably hope that the pioneers who were looking for a free place wouldn't reach it. Or would reach it, at least. However, when I moved on the main curse, Slavia, Shurik and Electronic appeared from the crowd. Can we? I had nothing against the company. Of course. Lunch was going surprisingly calmly. Even Electronic wasn't jabbering as he usually does. I finally finished the meal, sprawled in my chair, and, s and, satisfied, clicked with my tongue. Listen, do you know this pioneer? I saw him today. You know he's so... I suddenly realized that I don't really know how to describe him. Well, about my height, same constitution? Hard to say from such a description. Slavia smiled. Well, we have half a camp of such guys, if it comes to that. All in all, they were right. Why are you asking? It's just that I met him today, and it seemed like I haven't seen him before. Look in the canteen. I don't think he'll miss lunch. Why didn't I think of that? That's it! Okay, guys, enjoy your meal. Hmm. This went from a dating sim to a detective game. <laughs> I got up and started to slowly walk along the rows of tables. And if we find that man, we will find out in the next episode. So, thank you everybody for watching. Leave thoughts and stuff like that down below if you feel like it, and if you don't, do it anyway. Or I will come for you and haunt you in your sleep with dreams of Soviet camps. And you know what? I am very frightening in the position of Olga. I can tell you that. If you misline up, you are done for. Yeah. So much about that. Uh, bye?